Hi everybody, this is Kent Toussaint from Teen Therapy Center in Woodland Hills, California, coming to you live on Facebook, where we talk about our Tips on Teens video blog every week, Wednesdays at 12 o'clock. Um, if you have your questions, you can email us anytime at tipsonteens at teentherapycenter.com, or you can message us here on Facebook, where we answer your questions. And also you can see uh, past uh, video blogs on our Facebook page or on our website, teentherapycenter.com. So, let's get to today's question. How can we assist teens in developing trust with peers, with parents, with everyone when trust issues were compromised during a messy divorce and parental disputes? I see this a lot. Divorce is a really difficult subject for everyone. It's a difficult process for everyone to go to, especially kids, because kids are really out of control in this whole situation. And I'm not saying that divorce is necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes divorce is the right option for a family. It's the best option in a series of bad, bad solutions. Um, divorce is never fun, it's never happy, there's a lot of hurt feelings, and there's a lot of trust broken, even in some of the best divorces, where both parents stay amicable, uh, which is actually a, a pretty good situation, you know, can, you know, as, as things go. But uh, obviously, there's a lot of uh, trust issues. How is that possible? So here's number one. Trust issue number one, uh, the family has broken up and there's no longer necessarily a safe, uh, cohesive environment and a safe home. And that's a breach of trust. Also, in a case like this, with this question, a messy divorce. A messy divorce usually implies a lot of arguing, fighting, a lot of backstabbing. Um, obviously, it's a lot of ways this can look, but you know, when you, when parents start trying to pull kids into the fight, you know, they start trying to get the kids to pick sides. That's a breach of trust because no matter what, your child loves that other parent. And it's, it's difficult for you to understand because you may not love that parent anymore, that other parent. And I get it. You may have solid, solid reasons. But your child, no matter what, they always want to have a chance to resolve and want to have a chance to, to, um, to heal that, even when there's a lot of trust broken, even when the other parent is constantly violating that kid's trust, not showing up for play dates or not showing up, you know, for birthdays or, you know, being rude or insensitive or trying to get the other parent to badmouth the other one. You know, obviously these are just a few of many different examples, but it's really important that all these things can rip apart trust. And even if you're trying to be the best parent you can be, they may look at you and not trust you as well. And it may not even be your fault. It's just, it, you could be the safe parent where they can lash out at and know that you're safe. So, with all this going on, how do we help rekindle trust in a relationship with our kids and teens? And this is not easy, and it doesn't happen overnight, but what I would tell you is, keep acting in a trustworthy way. When your ex-spouse is bad-mouthing you, or is doing something inappropriate, and your kid says, but mom or dad, why does the other one do this? This is not your opportunity to jump in and say, well, I'll tell you why. That is not the time. The time right there is to say, you know, I don't know. I don't know why your mother or why your father is acting this way. All I know is what I'm doing and this is what I'm trying to do to help you and I'm really sorry. Tell me more about it. Listen more, talk less. You're not gonna convince them of anything. In fact, the more you try to convince them, it could backfire on you, <clears throat> excuse me, and make them resent you even more because you're disparaging the other parent. And even though they may be angry, it's still their parent. So make sure you're staying in a trusting, loving, compassionate, safe relationship with them. Make sure that they can count on your word. Now, again, Honesty does not mean telling everything that's going on with the divorce. They don't need to know that. They're not capable of understanding and emotionally processing all that. Maybe when they're in their 20s, they will be able to. But at 9 or 13 or 16, probably not. So if you need to vent about that, find your own therapist. Find a friend. Find a sibling. Find someone you can talk to for that. Um, but keep engaging with your kids in a trusting, compassionate, loving way. Have empathy. Again, you don't need to change what they're thinking. Just accept them and they will figure out and they will learn to trust you. And that trust with you will start going into other places in the world like their friends, teachers, step-parents, and so on. So 
Obviously, this is a huge topic, and there's a lot more discussion, hours and hours of discussion, but this is all the time we have for. There is a link uh, on the comment section below about an article we wrote a few years ago called Co-Parenting with Your Hated Ex-Spouse, which has a little more reading for you. If you have more questions, please email us at tipsonteens at teentherapycenter.com or message us right here on Facebook. And we look forward to uh, seeing you next week, Wednesday, 12 o'clock. Bye-bye.